What's up everybody, welcome back. Thank you so much for taking the time to hang out. In this video, we're taking out for a spin my very first monitor, the Andy Cine A6 Plus V2. So good to have you here. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. And let's just dive in. So recently, ND Cine reached out to me and shared their A6 Plus monitor. I have used a couple in different productions, whether we're looking at a higher end monitors, thousands of dollars, uh, or range hundreds of dollars. And I was very interested about these monitors because Andy Cine has a wide variety uh, of monitors and price points and features. The Andy Cine A6 Plus V2 will set you back 219. They also have an Andy Cine A6 Plus version. V2 has the additional USB-C port for power, which is a fantastic option if you have a power bank, a portable battery, you do have the option to charge this on the go, which is really, really cool. So I'm filming this on a Canon EOS R and I'm using the Andy Cine A6 Plus and I'm connected straight into the camera. I'm using an HDMI to mini HDMI because the Canon EOS R uses the mini HDMI instead of the micro HDMI. There are very affordable mini HDMIs out there, so that was not hard to find. It has a touch screen that allows you to tap around similar to the Canon EOS R or your smartphone. But since I'm primarily a smartphone videographer, you know that I went ahead and gave it a shot and tested it out with the iPhone. And it was really cool to be able to have this setup and see myself with the rear camera. Before I got the EOS R and I was filming everything 100% smartphone, I was actually pushed to simply video with a front facing camera because I rather decrease a little bit in quality, but still be able to see myself and compose the shot. I've used applications like Filmic Pro, applications like Filmic Remote. I've even used my Apple Watch as a viewfinder to be able to compose myself whenever I'm filming with the rear camera, but there's no denying that there's a sense of security when you can see yourself filming and you can go back and forth as a reference. Know if you're in the center of the frame, know if the composition is off, know if the lighting is off. And instead of having to go back and forth, it is so nice to be able to have a monitor that you can use as reference. Know that Andy Cine A6 Plus can assist in getting professional looking video in the form of waveforms and vector scope. These are incredibly useful when you're trying to achieve a specific color. Applications like Filmic Pro, for example, has some of these waveforms like a histogram and things like that. But this is huge to be able to maintain consistency, not only in exposure, but also colors. So it's really cool that you can actually get these in the monitor even if your camera doesn't have it. Maybe you're plugging in a phone, maybe you're plugging in a different camera. The vector scope and the waveform on the monitor are definitely a really nice thing to have that will assist you get a little bit more professional looking quality. You can double tap to open up the menu. You can swipe up to open different menu options. If you swipe on the right side, you increase and decrease the volume, which is really cool. And then if you do it on the left side, you have the option to increase or decrease the back light, which is very, very useful as well. If you're a really dark environment or a brighter environment, you can adjust that without having to dig into settings. So that's fantastic. You do have an audio meter that gives you the option to see visual representation of the audio. So if you have a microphone and you're recording everything in camera, it's very useful to stay within the levels, maybe adjust your gain in your settings. And when we go down here, you do have the option to enable different aspect ratios, including anamorphic. So if you're shooting on an anamorphic lens, it gives you the really nice bars. Traditionally, you would shoot with something, you know, simple in the 1.25 times or even 133. But you do have that option. It's really nice that you have the option to do that. But it's really nice to be able to zoom in as well to make sure that things are in focus. So it's a fantastic feature of the ND Cine A6 Plus V2, just being able to pinch to zoom to make sure that whatever you're in focus 
is actually in focus. Another thing I like about this monitor is that it automatically flips. Some monitors out there do not rotate or automatically rotate. You have to actually go into the menu and select which way you want to flip or rotate the image. So it's really awesome that the Andy Cine A6 Plus V2 has the option to rotate uh, based on your orientation. Sometimes I'm filming and I can see the monitor, but then if I want to show somebody in the front, so you know, so they have a little bit better context of what's going on, it's really cool to be able to flip and not have to dig into the menus for it to rotate. So auto rotation is super useful. Now the A6 Plus does come with a battery, but it does have support for Sony F970 batteries and Canon LPE6 batteries. And that's awesome because technically speaking, if you already have multiple batteries for your camera, you might be able to just to simply use them on the A6 Plus, making it very, very versatile if you're already using Canon or Sony cameras that support uh, that battery for the monitor. If not, that awesome USB-C port on the V2 will get you going if you have a portable battery. The monitor also has zero peaking, which will help you with your exposure. Make sure you don't have areas in your shot that are overexposed. And it also has focus peaking that allows you to see what's in focus and what's not. It's super cool because you do have the option to enable this mode in the monitor. And then you can actually zoom in with your camera. If you're using a camera that allows you to do a magnification, I often magnify and then readjust with the zebra peaking. It's super useful. That way you have a little bit better visual. Other camera apps on smartphones like Filmic Pro or the Moment app have that feature as well. And a ton of other cameras have had that feature for a while. So it's super useful that if you do, for example, have a camera that does not have this built in, using zebra peaking and focus peaking, it's super, super useful. In the package, you will also find a tilting arm, which is super useful. But if you do have other mounts that you already own or you're trying to build a gimbal rig or something like that, you do have quarter inch mounts that will allow you to build this as a rig, maybe attach a light, a microphone. Some people will love to use this on a gimbal and by using the monitor on an arm, that could be also a fantastic option. If you're using a tripod and you're consuming the hot shoe of your camera, then being able to mount a light or a microphone on top of the monitor is also a fantastic option. So it's really cool to be able to position the monitor in multiple different ways, not only horizontal, but you do also have the option to put it vertical if you really need to, which is really cool. And last but not least, one of my favorite features of the Andy Cine A6 Plus is the fact that it has LUT support. So if you have LUTs or lookup tables, you can actually import them using an SD card and it's really cool and useful because you can get really close to what the final product is going to be looking like with your LUT. In this case, I'm filming this in C-Log with my Canon ESR, but if I was filming, for example, in Filmic Pro on my iPhone, they do also have the option to film in a version of Log. If you're using any flat profile, it's really cool to be able to see the final result. That way you can make some tweaks in camera as far as your exposure goes. That way there's less work to be done in pose. So it's super cool that you can do this. And importing your LUTs is really easy. All you really gotta do is put them on an SD card and then you have the option to import them right from the monitor. You don't have to do anything else. And I'm a fan of this feature. A couple things to have in mind if you're using any smartphones, you do want an HDMI adapter. And it was really cool because I was able to get this to work with the Lightning to HDMI adapter and I didn't even need to plug it to power because the monitor is pretty much a five watt monitor. So the phone doesn't really need to provide as much power. But if you do have a USB adapter as well that goes to HDMI for phones that use USB-C, that's a fantastic option as well. It works like a little monitor, so I was able to plug it in and you know go to the internet and see different apps on the monitor as well. But when you switch over to different camera apps, it might give you a little bit bigger viewfinder. And instead of buying a big phone, it's really cool because you can keep the phone you have, use a monitor for you to be able to use it as a viewfinder to see yourself or have a better visual if you're using a gimbal or are filming someone else. Now, I have personally seen a lot of people that have a little bit of a challenge with the glossy screen. I personally like the glossy surface, but I do understand how this might bring a lot of reflection if you're trying to film and there's a lot of light or if you're outside and the environment's very bright as well. I could see how the reflection from sky trees or things around might make it a little bit challenging to see the monitor, but I personally haven't had that much challenge in that department because the monitor does come with a portable sunshade. It's very easy to apply. It's kind of Velcro around like a higher grade Velcro and you just pretty much apply it towards the edges with the frame. If not, you can just rock it without the frame and without the shade, 
but it's an alternative that's included as well and I appreciate that. I've actually used it a couple times already whenever I have lights in the environment. Uh, that could be a good alternative. So having said that, I personally think this is a fantastic monitor for the price at 219 or even the A6 Plus, the standard one, not the V2 at 199 at this point. I wouldn't be surprised if you can find them at a lower cost as well in different sales and things like that. But I think it's a fantastic monitor for all it can do. Vector scope, waveforms, 3D LUT support alone are consequential features that will allow you to get much better results while you're filming and you don't have to deal with all that stuff in pose. So it's making my job a lot easier. And I feel it could be a really good starting point for people trying to improve the quality of their videos, not only when they're vlogging or production wise, and you don't have as big of a budget to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars. I feel that this monitor brings a lot of value to the table for a fantastic price. But I wanna know what you think. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down there so we can continue to create relevant content for you. Once again, thank you so much for sharing your time with me. I'll catch you on the next one.